Welcome, welcome to the very first episode of the BBL Show with Jay Marriott and Drew Lasker, brought to you by T21 Media. We will be bringing you all things British basketball league related. Drew, this is our new thing. It's going down. Jay, you see these? These are the keys to the official BBL show. That's you ready right. To drive this thing, man. Let's plug this in. Let's get it into gear, and let's start with the pod itself. Um, so let's set the table um, for all our listeners um, and talk about this exciting project between the BBL and your T Twenty One Media. Yeah, well, um, I've been in the BBL for sixteen years now, and um, so I've seen a lot. And I must admit, I was part of that majority crowd that sits there on the sidelines and say what the BBL should or shouldn't be doing. And so I just felt like it was the perfect time for me to kind of take action. So uh, with, two, with, with, with uh, 21 Media and yourself, uh, we made the pitch to the BBL, just basically said, we want to create that that 24 news cycle for the BBL, you know, on the weekends, things are jumping, there's jam packed action, but then on Monday through Thursday, there's nothing. So how can we continue that momentum of the league and uh, help it grow and get to the place that it's supposed to be? And, you know, when we pitched to them, we basically said, let, let, let's pull back the curtains, right? Let's uh, provide some transparency, uh, for, for the consumer, so they can kind of know the good, the bad, the ugly. And if everyone kind of knows what teams, leagues are going through on a day-to-day basis, there might be a little bit more compassion. And, you know, that might result into people wanting to get on board together and kind of push this league to where we all know it deserves to be. So mm-hmm. that's, what the, that's what the BBL uh, show is for. And uh, we're, you know, I'm, I'm excited about this thing and uh, to try to do our part into pushing this league forward. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I think our expectations and the best way to describe um, me and you, and we'll introduce the team as well in a second. Um, but the best way to, to kind of describe us is we're hoping to be a bridge uh, between the BBL and between the fans and hopefully the listeners here at the BBL show. Um, I think uh, it's wanted on both parties. And sometimes I think perhaps the fans don't understand that. I think when we spoke to the league, um, it was such a fantastic meeting. Um, you know, I think one of the things that came out of it was, you know, did you, did you steal my notebook as, as <laughs> yes, I was kind of talking yes. about that creative element? So I knew mm-hmm. we had something special. Um, but let's kind of talk about arguably the most important pieces is the people behind the scenes. Yes. Um, you um, you know them. They are with you. They work with you. Um, for me, I have had um, an amazing time working with you guys. But let's just introduce the team. Yeah, and when I think about our team, um, everyone has different strengths, but we've all come together to make a strong team, right, to kind of put this, this whole thing together. And I must start off with our co-founder of 21 Media, uh, Yvonne Harris, and she's like the brains to this operation. She's also a phenomenal writer and writes scripts. So, um, and, and then next, moving on to our executive producer, Corey Mallory, who is, who's behind the ones and twos, and he'll be in charge of the, the, the audio podcast, making sure that that gets uploaded and that it gets out there to the people on, on Tuesdays. And then we got our video producer, Matt Rowlingson, who is going to bring those visual effects to you guys. So, uh, you know, we're bringing the audio side and the visual side. So, like I said, on, on Tuesdays, we plan to drop the, the podcast. And then Thursday, we come back with the visuals. And then um, the marketing team, five or six, um, they, they bring that professional look that we all desire. Um, so, really happy that they're on board. And then last but not least... Uh, Selena Conroy, who is head of communications of the BBL. And we are so, so thankful for her in the league because they, uh, they were able to see our vision, get on board with our vision and then for us to, and for them to believe in us. And so, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that's going to be behind the scenes 
to make this go is just you and I on the on, on the on the front on the uh, on the front lines. But yep. uh, we're gonna make this thing go. Yeah, I mean they they, they have embraced us, but we've been very thankful for. Um, in terms of um, both our expectations of the show, you know, I'm pretty excited. We want to be uh, talking to coaches. We want to be talking to players. We want to be um, addressing and highlighting situations through the season. Very, very excited to be working on kind of the predictions. So that's yes. as, as teams, I'm looking forward to those preseason rankings that are coming up. Um, I'm also looking forward to, to kind of watching some of these guys this year and, and making some early predictions on some MVPs. Um, I, I think this, this is going to be something that, like you said, brings us um, something during the week. And I think at this point in time, um, you know, let's be honest, guys, you know, 2020 has been tough. I'm tired of all this COVID talk. Oh, you know, let's, let's stay safe for sure, but let's bring that positive energy that we plan to bring here on the BBL show. Yeah, and that is the plan. So for our listeners and supporters out there, we just ask that you guys just uh, come on this journey with us, grow with us. Where you see us at for episode one, this is not where we plan to stay. Uh, we plan on taking this thing to another stratosphere. So just be patient with us. And we want to, we're doing this for you guys. We want to bring you guys content and give you insider information that you guys all desire. So that way you don't have to run the message boards trying to, you know, to having to do a lot of guesswork, right? You come right here to the BBL show and we're going to tell you like it is. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to definitely promote the positivity, but we're also going to show the, the ugly side, the bad side as well. Like I said, we want more transparency. So we're going to, we're going to expose ourselves as a league. That's right. There's beauty in the struggle too. So, um, you know, we're excited by that. Let's, let's kind of focus on our guest today, uh, director of basketball and head coach Vince McCauley of the London Lions. The limelight is rightly on him and his team right now as they prepare to compete in the FIBA Champions League competition. So they will be flying the flag for us over there. Um, Drew, before we bring him on, um, let's review the roster a little bit and get just some initial thoughts out there. Over to you. Yeah, I'm just kind of looking up and down this roster and you just see it's just infused with talent. Um, you know, from a player perspective, like it has to be fun because like everything is going to have to be earned. I mean, they're four deep at every position. I'm looking here now. They just signed a new point guard today uh, so that, you know, they're four deep when healthy. Then the wing, you know, you're looking at the wings. They got Ed Lucas, Dirk Williams, uh, and then the NBA Liggins and, and Josh Ward, Ward Hibbert. And then, man. The, the forward center position. The size. How is he, how is he going to manage the playing time there? You got size after size after size, but talent, mixing with talent. So, you know, coach, he, he has one hell of a job on his hands. Yeah, I mean, it's an exciting job though, right? It's, yeah. um, you know, I think this is a, you know, a little bit kid in the candy store. Don't get me wrong. He, he's doing his homework. I'm sure of that. And he's trying to bring in a team that I think most reflects him. I think having seen some of the preseason games, they they look like that tough, um, fast, athletic, get-in-your-face London Lions team. But let's be honest, they've added a great deal of length, a great deal of height, and a great deal of athleticism. We've seen some highlights in those games that uh, I was very surprised to see. Um, I'm excited. You know, let's let's get into this right now. Yeah, let's without do it. further ado, let's welcome Coach Vince McCauley. Here we go, Coach. Thanks for joining us on the BBL show. Quite yes, rightly, sir. the spotlight is on yourself and the Lions right now as you navigate European competition. You are our first guest. How does that feel? First of all, thank you for having me on at all. So having me on as the first one, well, we're delighted. Um, I mean, it's been a long time. We've all been sitting at home trying to kick our heels and wondering when we're going to get to basketball. But to have you guys here, you know, someone like Drew in here who's, uh, you know, pink shoes and all, trophies <laughs> and all. I mean, it feels like we're getting back into it now. And I think yes, that's sir. fantastic. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you guys are in the spotlight, so it was only right. You know, you guys kick off this thing on the 22nd, so it was only right 
that we started the show off with the London Lions. Well, let's hope we can do it justice. <laughs> hey, that's right. Let's kind of get straight into this. Um, you know, let's start with this exciting new investment from Miami and what this means for the London Lions moving forward. Well, you know, that's, it, it, it encompasses so many things, Jay. Um, you know, I think we've all been here. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at you two here, and you've been around BBL for a very, very long time like I have. Um, I've been at the bottom uh, uh, in terms of trying to get my team to even compete. I've been at the top in terms of winning some of the trophies. Um, and I'm, I know how much effort it go, that goes into it um, across so many clubs, whether it be behind the scenes, whether it be the coaches, whether it be the, the, the fans who are trying to spread the word about the game, the players. You know, we put a lot of work in as a group. Um, but the one thing that, you know, we've never had the luxury of is to actually have some money to put in where we believe to be the right things. You know, and I think that's the challenge that we all have had. Um, I've got many dreams. I've got plans all over the place here about things that one could do if one had some funds. So to be in a position where, you know, we've got some people on board now who, who, who buy into the dream, you know, like everybody else, you know, if I've been asked it once, I've been asked it over a thousand times, you know, why is this basketball not successful? You know, I have never taken anyone to a game and then seen them after the game and they say, oh, well, that wasn't very good. I've never seen this. Like, what? This goes on here in my town? I didn't know. Um, so, so my dreams are that, you know, with this, this possibility, you know, we can go out there, we can sell the game, we can put the resources in the back end of the clubs that the clubs need to be able to, to generate what we need to do as a club. Um, and it's those kind of things that I'm really excited about. I mean, obviously, I'm sure we're going to get down to players and the excitement of that. But, you know, just to be able to actually have an idea, fund it, and make it happen in a game that we love is sensational. An incredible feeling, right? And, um, you know, I kind of want to jump in there and just say how happy I personally am for you, Coach, because we've known each other for a long time, um, you know, and we've seen the blood, sweat and tears that you've given to this, this club. Um, you know, we've seen um, the venues with a, with a high number of port in there. And now <laughs> we're, you know, we're on the verge of, of European competition it, it just must be a surreal feeling for yourself. You know, you have to pinch yourself. And like you say, you know, um, you know, drew himself with a play that you did yourself when you coached, you know, when we were in the warehouse in Don Canes or in the shopping center. Um, I mean, <laughs> I can't even think of some of the crazy things that we've done. But, you know, let me, um, let me show you how, what it actually kind of, how, how it kind of means something, right? So about... Um, Three or four years ago, I was talking to Coach Manuel Penner. I don't know if you remember Coach Penner, who was at uh, the Reading Rockets. Yeah, well, great guy. You know, we spoke with him, and we, you know, we used to share ideas and stuff like that. Um, we hoped that he would work with us one day. You know, it didn't transpire that way. But he, we said we would always keep in touch. So I, I spoke to him a couple of weeks, like a couple of days ago, three days ago. And um, so, obviously, he's now at Zaragoza, you know, in the ACB. Mm-hmm. We're taking a, a London Lions team from the BBL to go and play against Neptunus. Mm. And so we're having a conversation on the phone. And he said, Coach, can you realize what we're discussing here? I said, it's crazy. You know, in a few years' time, you know, we've been really scrabbling around about what we're going to do about this, that, and the other here, you know, in the academy program for this. And now all of a sudden we're talking about, well, you know, you know, with Zara Gosman, you played Neptunus last year, and this, that, and the other. And he said, this is surreal. And that's actually how surreal it really is, yeah. you know. Um, I feel, I feel excited about the possibilities. I feel so proud for the BBL. Uh, and I really hope that we can do BBL justice uh, because I've never believed, I have to say this, I, I know Drew's been here for so many years and I go back a long time with, um, with Coach Nigel Lloyd. You know, I've never believed all the talk about, you know, Europeans, this and Europe. And no disrespect to any Europeans out there, please, right? But, you know, that this is better than us, that is better than us. I don't buy that. Mm -hmm. I just don't buy that. We haven't had the resources to do what we can do to compete on an equal footing. That's I look it. back at some of the guys that have played. You know, look at look at um, um, Fletcher at Newcastle right now. Look at some of the guys that we've had. Corey Dixon, when he played at Plymouth and played with us. What well, these guys can compete against anyone, you know. And yeah. I think, you know, just to get the BBL to a position where a club can get out there and say, well, you know what, this kind of represents what we stand for. Let's see how it goes against you guys, and and, and that's what I really want to do. Yeah, and you, and you said that the BBL has never lacked talent. It's always just been infrastructure and resources. And I just want to dive a little bit deeper, uh, take our listeners through your timeline. Um, you know, you, you, you 
uh, got in a leadership position in the late 80s with Hemel. And then you moved on to Milton Keynes. I remember the shopping center. I remember being a I remember having as an opponent having to get dressed in like this closed shopping center that was freezing, <laughs> by the way. Cold. Really <laughs> cold. Yeah, really cold. And then you and then from there you go from an industrial uh warehouse and then you guys uh move across town to the beautiful copper box to now um all of a sudden getting this injection of cash. And I, I, I spoke to Dave Forrest and I said, sum up uh, Coach Vince in one word. And the word that he used to describe you was a survivor. And one thing that I always like to say to the people out there is that in the journey of success, like you can't skip the struggle. Like when you're trying to get to the end of that rainbow, like there is a process that you must endure like you must go through. You can't get to the finish line without going through that windy road. And so now to see you at the at the end of the rainbow, because you've had you are at the pot, you got the injection. So when you think about all those things that you've been through over the past 30 years, like how does that feel? Well, you know, it's you know, you you just kind of do it, you know, in a funny kind of way. You know, I, you guys will know that I talk about coach Jimmy Rogers, you know, who brought me into the game, you know, and, and Jimmy's thing of, you know, you never give up, you never give up, you never give up. And, and, and that's, you know, you, you, you know, you, you take it in without really thinking about it. It's in you. And, and the kind of um, obstacles that we faced, I don't know how we came through. I, I just got to say, I don't know how, how we came through and, you know, you know, dreams and hopes in, in many ways, because, you know, in Hemel, I thought I could make it work there. They chucked, out of, chucked us out of the venue. That, but, you know, my thing was, oh, well, the season is starting in August, so where are we going to play? You know, so you go to, to, to Watford and you have the, the, the arrangement with the Watford Football Club. We're about to get launched in there. They win promotion to the Premier League. You know, hey, Vince, you know, we're going to buy a player. We don't want to build this fantastic facility that's actually going to be better for us in the future. We just want to buy the leg of another player. You know, and I'm like, well, but you're going to get relegated next year. So if you do this now, this will be better for the future. Blah, blah, blah. Nah. So then the dream fails. Then you're like, well, where do we go next? Then you go to Milton Keynes. Well, I didn't even know where Milton Keynes was. <laughs> you know, and you go to Milton Keynes and you get promised again. You know, I, we designed this fantastic 4,000 seater venue, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they cheat you out of it too. You know, and, you, and then you're sitting there, you're going, well, what's this? So sitting on the, um, on the balcony, of uh, John Lewis in, in the shopping center one, one, one summer around by June, July, thinking, well, the season's upon us soon, not sure where we're going to play. And I'm looking out in this space, you know, the space, right? So, mm -hmm. and they've got a beach there, you know, sand and kids playing with, with, with deck chairs. And I'm like, well, actually, what do you need for a basketball venue? You know, you need a floor, right. you need some seats, which we have at Bletchley, you need some lights, they already had some there. What else do you need? <laughs> you ready to go, you know, some baskets. So you just keep on going. You, you never think, you just keep on going. And um, I, I felt defeated at the end, I have to say, around about um, June, just before the Olympics, you know, when we had been let down again, the warehouse that we converted, we'd done such a good job. We'd revitalized the area that this building that had been empty for 10 years suddenly became in demand. That's how we lost mm -hmm. the building. So... Mm -hmm. I'm sitting there really thinking that this really is the end of the road. I mean, I'm just, I really had run out of ideas, but something was playing in the back of my head and it was the radio talking about, yes, the Olympics is about to start and, you know, more fire and this, that and the other. And I'm thinking Olympics, 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 venues. There must be venues if there's an Olympics, you know, and that's how, we end, that's how we end up at the cover box, which, you know, they were delighted to have us. You know, nobody had approached them. Nobody had said, do you want a basketball team here? They said, well, you mean you would bring your Lions team to, to London? Well, why not? You know, and lo and behold, you're here, you know, and, and you need some luck along the way. Um, I think we had some of that. And um, by doing that, we put ourselves, you know, like Coach, <coughs> like Coach Bobby Knight used to say, you got to put yourself in position to be in position to be in position. That's yeah, right. Position, you, you know? I mean, you're, you're sitting there, you know, obviously you, you've got the venue. You know, you feel like um, you've built the teams and like you're saying that the, the, the players coming over, you feel like they can compete. But here we go. We've got the investment and you're about to embark on probably the most exciting journey 
of your career so far going into the FIBA Champions League competition. <laughs> yeah, exciting. exciting. Um, my thing is, I just want to know, what are your expectations going into this? You've kind of answered this, I think, by um, your thoughts on the level of competition we have in this country. But is this going to be a feeling out process to look around you and build and, and, and get ready to really build a legacy? Or is this a, um, you know, come into a situation where you want to make some noise? You know, because if I know one thing about you and if I know one thing about your teams is there's never been a feeling out process, you know, no. tough, uh, physical, like you were saying, you know, you've had to ride the ups and the downs. And I feel like those teams are built for that. They're built to handle anything. What are your expectations coming into this competition? Well, you know, you know, that's, I, you know what I feel you know, I, I feel a respect to, to all the guys who have played in the league. I have to say that first. You know, I feel a respect to all the guys who have played in the league. You know, Charles Smith, Fab Flournoy, you know, um, even some of the guys, you know, who played with you uh, down at Plymouth, you know, uh, Gavin, uh, some of the guys at Cheshire over the years, you know, that Billy Singleton, you know, all these kind of guys who put a lot of work into our league. I feel, I feel kind of like a respect for those guys that whatever we do, you know, I want to be able to look them in the face. I feel like, yeah, we've tried to do it, and this is what we did. Whatever, whatever those chips may fall. Now, that's that's one thing I carry with me all the time. Because you know, Coach Coach Nigel Lloyd and I talk all the time. We talk with Fabulous Fornoy all the time. We talk with Nick Nurse all the time, and we all are excited. Um, I think when I sat down there and, and, and with the investors, they asked me, they asked me, you know, what do you think we can do? And I'm like, well, you know, you only have to look at the fact that a British team hasn't won a game in Europe for 21 years. Mm -hmm. Ironically, it was Nick Nurse. Now, so, so winning a game is, is going to be huge. You know, never mind in the, in the situation we find ourselves where we're going to a foreign country, it's going to be a knockout situation, and then we're going to have to beat another team to get in. So it's a very, very tough ask. But, you know, we've been looking at players for some time now, trying to see what's this level of play? What, what is the level of player? You know, how do you evaluate the level of player? What's the difference? You know, Justin Robinson came back, uh, from Europe to us and made a big difference instantly to us. Then you look at some of the guys who did come back from you, who've come to play with us, say, Kirby Bristol, you know, his level of play. He's a guy who played in Lithuania all the time. You know, he's played at the highest level. So, well, that's not very far from where we all are. Yeah. So if we can get a number of those guys together and we can find a system that works for us, now obviously I'm very, very clear on what that system is. You know, I'm, I'm not confused about that system because I remember talking to John McCall, you know, when he played at Cheshire, when he played at uh, Thames Valley, and then he left the BBL and went to play in France. <clears throat> and they put a team together that almost got to the final four uh, of this competition. Mm -hmm. And they had guys who were all about 6'8", six, 6'9", six, six, very mobile, very athletic. And that challenges the ethos of the way European basketball is played. You know, if you make a mistake with Neptunus, they're going to pass you to death. You know, mm -hmm. and we can't beat them at the game that they play. What we have to do is beat them at the game that we play. So... Whilst the typical basketball team in the BBL is going to be like, say, you know, 6'1", 6'4", 6'5", 6'7", if I moved all of that up a little bit with athletes, so now we're 6'5", 6'8", 6'9", 6'11", I think we can compete in a way that they might not be used to. Yeah. You know, who's to say till we get on the floor? So that means that mm. we're going out there with a vision to beat them. You know, we're going out there with a vision to beat them. We're going to run the floor. We're going to be athletic like we are in the BBL. We're going to be relentless. We're going to press up and down the floor. And if they want to beat us, they're going to have to match us at that pace. Absolutely. And I mean, I, I'm very excited to kind of see the two blends. Um, talk to me a little bit about Neptunus. You know, obviously, um, last season, they, they played very, very well in the group stages. Um, they're very experienced in this competition. Um, you know, you've kind of alluded to the fact that you know, their passing and their sets are going to be exceptional. But do you see some, uh, some holes in their game where that athleticism and that length is, is uh, perhaps going to be a shock to them initially? Well, you know, yes, for sure I do. First of all, give respect to this team, you know, four or five straight years in the Champions League, you know, at a high level. And I think when, when the virus hit, there was something like seven and nine. So they won seven games against a pretty tough competition. You know, Bross Bamberg, the AK Essence, all these kind of guys. You know, um, even Zaragoza, they beat Zaragoza by 20 mm -hmm. at home in Neptunus. Um, so they're a very, very well-organized team. They are strong as heck. 
you know, physically, and they run hard. I mean, you know, when you're coaching, coach, you know that, you know, when you're telling your big kids to go and set a screen, you keep begging them to sprint into the screen. My goodness, yeah. these guys are sprinting into screens and knocking your head off, you know. So they're a very, very strong physical team. Um, in terms of holes in their game, obviously, we're not trying to give anything away, and it's always tough. But, you know, we understand that they like to play a particular way. You know, and do or die, they're going to play that way. So yeah. if we can lull them into a sense of, of, of where this game isn't working, we don't believe that they, they, they will change on the fly, like maybe we're used to. I think, you know, we are blessed in the BBL, you know, with coaches from different backgrounds, players from different backgrounds. We have the ability. I mean, you only need to look at what Nick Nurse did last year and this year. Who would have ever thought you could play a box on one in, in, in the NBA finals? You know, you would have never thought that. Right, and you would never see anybody in Europe doing that. But but because the BBL is what it is, it makes you be able to think on the fly. It makes you be able to try different things, and that's how we feel we can keep them just slightly off level. And if we can keep them off level, and we, I mean, we would have to have a good day. We're going to have to have a good day. We've got good players, but we're going to have to have a good day uh, to make it happen. Yeah, that that is like the life on the court and off the court in the BBO, it forces you to think outside the box. But let's just talk a little bit about the macro perspective. Uh, a couple of months ago, I, I sent out a tweet saying that the London Lions, uh, the, sorry, that the BBL's um, future is pe predicated on the London Lions European success. And it wasn't received uh, too well, but what would you say to that comment? <clears throat> well, I mean, I I, I believe that London has to be successful, you know, and I think a lot of people who understand about the league and understand what's going on around recognize that that is the case. You know, London has to be successful to attract the attention that we need the league to attract for the league to get the resources it needs to do what it needs to do. There's no question about that. Now, you know, is it in terms of what we can do in Europe? Well, maybe it is and maybe it has to be, you know, um, we know no one's going to respect us, you know, as we go out there, they, they, no matter, even we punch them in the face, they're not going to respect us. They, they're going to think it's a fluke. They're going to think a lot of different things. So we, we're not measuring ourselves by that. We're just measuring ourselves by what can we do? It, it's, you know, we're in a change situation. You know, it, it, you know, we're going from, you know, to, to, you know, from where we were to where we're going is a big gap on and off the floor. So we've got to show that we can bridge that gap. You know, you talk about things like, um, you know, sales sales offices. You talk about things like, you know, tickets. You talk about things like social media. You talk about things like um, player welfare. These are all things that have to be right to get the league to where it needs to be. Um, we can do that. And if we do that, the league's going to benefit. Yes. You know? Now, if we win, it's going to put a lot of eyeballs across to the league. Not just us. It's going to do the same. You know, everybody already knows about Newcastle and Leicester with the venues and the record that you guys have. You know, then they're going to be looking around the fantastic facilities at Glasgow. Look at what's going on at Worcester. You know, they're trying to build a venue at Sheffield. A lot of people will start looking like, hang on, what's going on here? Because we yeah. already know. And I know there are people yelling at this podcast, you know, Kieran Achara, Steve Bucknell, all these guys who've always said, that we have the athletes as good as, if not better than all the guys in Europe who just want a chance, you know. That's right. <clears throat> Obviously, we can't have a, a boom and bust scenario like we had back in the day. You know, we've got to have a situation where people are committed to the long-term future of the yes. club and the league mm -hmm. and on all of us, you know. And, I, I, you know, I think, you know, I've been around long enough to be able to see it, you know. And I think I've seen it where people have been flashy and flash. It's not about that. It's about do these guys care about the long-term future of the league? Yes, yeah. they do. Do yeah. they care about the long-term future of the London Lions? Yes, they do. So they're committed. So mm. I think with that knowledge of the long-termism of it, I think we can really do something. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, you took the words out of my mouth. I was about to say is that what, what we need from the London Lions is, is just a chance to get some eyeballs on the league. You know, I think that's really, really important that, um, you know, that they look at you and then they start to look through you and see what else is, is around you guys. No disrespect to everybody else. I mean, we know Newcastle and Leicester um, uh, have done some fantastic things. We've got other teams building venues, but we know that London as a capital, whether that's the US looking in, whether that's Europe looking in, is going to be the place 
um, where we need to see the success for growth. Exactly. Um, so I'm, I, I'm pretty excited on that part. Let, let, let's kind of focus on the team a little bit. So talk to me about um, how you feel about the team right now. Uh, you've, you've gone through a little bit of preseason. What you're seeing in terms of um, leaders coming out of that group. You know, obviously, we, 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 we've seen enough there. And obviously, um, you know, a few new additions um, in recent weeks that, that um, you know, really going to help propel you forward in this competition. Yeah, I mean, you know, great. It's a great uh, opportunity that we're blessed with, but also we have to look at it in, in a, on, a, on a twofold situation. Obviously, we're trying to build this team to win in Europe, but also we have a BBL campaign uh, to, to play in. You know, we know that everybody's going to be after us. I mean, first of all, I know everybody's supporting us to be successful in Europe. Let's not get it twisted. We know that, of right? But we know that when we get to Newcastle and Drew takes the floor, you know it. go to Leicester and Coach Martin also looks across you, you know, you know we're in for a fight. We know that, right? But we know that they support us in what we're trying to do here. So, uh, you know, we want to be able to be in the same position next year whereby we can be at the top of the table and have a chance to go into Europe again. So it's important we get that balance right. And when you look at the fixtures, I, I, mean, I you know, I supported the Leicester Riders when when um, they went into, into European competition. I went down to a bunch of the games, I, you know, and they were so unlucky in two or three games down there. So, mm. you, you know, it was a case of, all right then, look at these injuries. I mean, the first game, you know, no Pierre Hampton. Boom. You know, then they, they lose lost. this guy, then they lose that guy. I think by the time they got to January, the Delhi could suit up six guys. So you're in a situation where, okay, right, so how many players do we need so we can rest some guys as we go through the season. I've looked at the fixture list, which is about to come up. We're trying to fix them around. And when you look at, you know, Friday, we're in Manchester. Sunday, we're at home. Monday, we fly to Athens. Wednesday, we play Athens. Thursday, we play, uh, we fly home. Friday, we go to Plymouth. Sunday, we entertain Newcastle. Woo! <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, ex <laughs> I'm exhausted listening to that schedule, but... As I look at this roster, first of all, you're, you're very deep. And the, the thing that stands out is the talent across the board. And I feel like you as a coach, you have the easiest job in the league and you have the toughest job in the league. You have the easiest job because you got the most talent. No if and buts about it. But you have the most difficult job because of the talent. How do you plan to manage the egos that come with such a talented roster? <laughs> well, <laughs> I already mentioned Jimmy Rogers. Now I'm going to mention Kevin Cato, you know. So the first thing that Kevin Cato said in one of the conversations we had, he was on his way to his first gig in Scotland. So he was leaving Buffalo, New York. His high school coach drove him to the airport. And on the way to the, to, to the, to the plane, he said to Kevin, you know, so, you know, what are you going to do when you get there? So Kevin was like, well, you're going to run this play, you're going to run that play, you're going to play this defense. You know, and when they got there and he was getting out, the coach put his hand on his shoulder and said, listen, Kev, without horses, you can't win. You can X and O's till the cows come home. Without horses, <laughs> you can't win. So <laughs> I've always taken that to heart, right? So when I spoke earlier on with people like Joe King, our captain, Andre Lockhart, and Justin Robinson, Justin's like, coach, if you're bringing anybody that's not better than me, what's the point? <laughs> right? Yeah. What's the point? Otherwise, how are we going to win? So that's the first thing. That just tells you your leader, your two-time MVP, is telling you to go and get somebody better than me. That That's answers amazing. your question about ego. That's what we are about at this club. Yeah. You know, we understand that this is a collective. So when we were identifying the kind of guys that we wanted to bring, you know, DeAndre Liggins, you know, whether it be Kevin Ware, you know, whether it be Kirby Bristol, you know, we already knew people like Kevin. We knew, we knew he was coming in here as a teammate. You know, and I think once we started bringing that group together and they sensed it, it was a collective. You yeah. know, now, who's going to, it's not like going to be like in the BBL where one guy is going to try to play 38 minutes. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. you, know, you cannot do that. By the time you go out there and play six, seven minutes, you're done. The next mm -hmm. guy is going to be coming in fresh. The next guy is going to be coming in fresh. So at the end of the day, I don't expect Justin Robinson to play more than 20, 22 minutes. I don't expect Mullins to play more than 20, 22 minutes. Yeah. You know, and how is uh, that, uh, how is that kind of, perspective gonna gonna play on you is that is that gonna be kind of an, a, an adjustment period for you as well you know because obviously that's a very european look right there um yeah. a lot of americans especially that come over to europe are kind of surprised sometimes that they they only play between 15 to 20 minutes which yeah. is the norm if you know the leagues 
Um, is that going to take some adjusting to for yourself also? Yes, it is. I mean, yes, it is. I mean, again, I'm lucky to have a great coaching staff. You know, the guys who've been with me for some time now, they know how I like to do things, but also they bring different things to the table. You know, Nick, my assistant coach, Nick Laurie, does a lot of pre-game stuff. He does all our scouting breakdown. He does all our videos on players. You know, Coach Dave is very technical-minded. He's very minutiae-minded. Uh, Andrea is all about defense. So we come together as a unit. And we've been, you know, I mean, obviously the pandemic is a disaster across the board. Let's not get that wrong. But what it did is it sat us all at home. And it gave us time to rethink ourselves and rethink what we're about in life as a whole, let alone our jobs in basketball. Mm -hmm. um, but what it did with that particular group of us is, you know, we talked about this for a very, very long time. What this team would look like. How would our games look? How would we play? You know, so we're here, you know, approaching this game and we've actually already almost got a scripted game plan. You know, we've never been that detailed before. Of course, we've always had scout reports, game plans, blah, 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 but we've actually got almost a scripted game plan of how mm -hmm. we're trying to go into this game. You know, and I think it's that that's going to assist us in terms of when this guy comes in, when that guy comes out, etc. as well as, you know, what you do as a coach from what you read on the floor. But we're coming to try and be as prepared as we possibly can. And that's what's happened to us. And, and the guys are helping us. I mean, if Drew was on this team, he'd be doing exactly the same thing. He'd be like, Coach, you want me to start on this guy? You want me to come in and finish him on his time? What is it you want me to do? Mm -hmm. you know, and as long as you know what you want your guys to do, they're going to do it. Because you know, I've carefully selected these guys, uh, Coach Jay, around a reason why they themselves would want to be su successful in this situation. It's not just, I want to be successful or the club wants to be successful. I found that they're specific. Look at Byron Mullins. You know, he's the guy who never comes, right? He's never came to the Olympics, never came to this game. Never came. He's the guy who never comes. He's right and here. you got him. You fished yeah. him in. And he's like, well, I want to show them that I couldn't come, but I'm here now. I'm going to make it happen. So that's me. I don't mm -hmm. need to fire him up. He's already fired up. You know, I got DeAndre Liggins. You know, he was in Greece. They get paid. They get played. They get, you know, and he's like, I want to prove to them they made a big mistake. Yeah. So everybody has a little reason who I should work. And if I uh, line them all up in a row, who knows? <laughs> can we um, can we kind of focus on those NBA guys a little bit? Was there was there any hesitation in looking towards NBA guys? You know, because obviously um, European experience would probably play a big part in your in your scouting. Um, yeah. You know, Liggins has that. Um, especially, but was there any nervousness that, you know, perhaps the levels that they've seen, because these are two guys, these are not two guys that have um, had NBA experience with the word summer league at the end of it, or um, <laughs> a, a workout letter. These are guys that have played with LeBron James, for example. Um, you know, if you look at Mullins, there's some numbers. There's some really impressive numbers in there in his time in the NBA. Was there some nervousness that this particular project may not kind of reach their, their level of expectations? Or did you really feel their desire and hunger coming into this? Right. Well, firstly, for myself, there was no nervousness. I mean, um, I'm not a nervous person that, in that way, especially when it comes to basketball. You know, this is something I love. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sure I'm sharing it with you two and you're the same. This is something I love. So I can never be nervous around basketball, uh, number one. Um, but also, no, number two, you know, I've done this with no resources in the past. So to do it with some resources, hey, you know, I've done it barefoot. <laughs> Give me some shoes. I'll do it better. That's where I come from. So, so now I have to say that, you know, seeing what, what Nick did uh, in, in, in his career, coaching-wise, see what Fab did and, and his successes in the last, not just here in the UK, but over those couple of years and going through to the, to, to the NBA, it's like, well, they are one of us, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, Drew more than anybody else has spent more time time with Fab. You know, he would look at him as one of us. So, so for me, it's like, well, these guys are doing it at the highest level. Not only that, they are adding, to, uh, you know, adding positivity to the highest level. So why can't we all do that? So, you know, you treat everybody, we all, we all wear the kit the same way, right, Drew? <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah. And I think, but I think, I do believe that, you know, uh, you know, in the conversations around someone like Mullins, you know, is, it, is he a motivated Byron Mullins? If it's a motivated Byron Mullins, we're okay. Mm -hmm. If it's a Byron Mullins that's strolling around, 
you know, looking for his gun so he can find the next deer to shoot or whatever it is he does in the woods, <laughs> that guy can't help us. You know, but if it's the monster that has a point to prove, he can. And yeah. so that's that that's why I felt confident, you know, in going in that direction. And it's the same with all of them. You know, Kevin Ware, we all know the horrific situation with Kevin. I mean, how can you come back from that? Yeah. How how, how can you come back from that? To come back from that, you must be a special person. You really yeah. must. You know, then you take Doug Williams, you know, more or less, you know, him and his couple of running mates at Sheffield, not enough guys. Now you put him in a situation where he can let his guns go. Why not? Why not? So that's that's how I, you know, slowly put that together. Mm -hmm. You know, with the defensive tenacity of, of a Kirby Bristol and an Ed Lucas, you know, Jules Danga Kodo, those kind of things. That unfortunately, Jules won't be able to play due to injury. So we ended up having to bring Stephen Brown. But Stephen Brown came in here with his eyes wide open and hungry as heck. You know, yeah. actually gave us even a further boost, you know. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, you know, we're confident with the group. Um, and what I've said, you know, your fans I know will be asking is, you know, look, we want the best of everyone. If we have the best of everyone and we put it on the floor, we'll take whatever happens as long as we get the best of everyone. Yeah, and you talked about it. It's that mentality and, uh, you know, your first preseason games that you guys have in Belgium. Uh, you talked about that mentality, and that's something that I that was evident was the body language. And, you know, if it was Mullins just, you know, one-step tomahawk, or if it was Liggins that catch it on a baseline and kind of reversed it like Kobe, I was like, wow. And, and so uh, I, I think that you had the right approach of not only focusing on the the physical aspect, but making sure you're getting guys in that's hungry and that have a point to prove. Well, that's right. I mean, Coach Jay just mentioned also when in that question, you mentioned about, you know, the latter additions to the team who, who, who could make a contribution. And, and obviously, I mentioned Stephen, but also it's the same thing with NBA, you know, Matthew Bryant. You know, well, you know, people have asked me, why isn't he in your team? Why isn't he in your team? Every year, why isn't he in your team? You know, obviously, yeah. I've known him for as long as I've known Justin over the years at Brixton, you know, but he's a guy who's been doing some other successful things elsewhere, you know, but now I believe. Here is a mature Matthew, you know. Agreed. Here is a mature Agreed. Matthew, you know. He, 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 I, th I thought he showed great maturity finishing off the season with, uh, with Surrey last year. And not only that, you know, working with the guys in a very, you know, you know, rigorous, rigorous way, an equal, equal way, you know. And I think that showed me at that time, okay, now he's beginning to mature. Obviously, he's never shy about being confident. We know that with yeah, Matthew, yeah. right? <laughs> you know, but, you know, now you got a guy like that. And you say, okay, we don't know what's going to happen in the game. Are we going to get to the 37th minute of the game and we're all going to be stuck and we're just going to need something? He can mm -hmm. give you something. You yeah. know? And that's why he's in the team and, and that's how we've tried to find those kind of guys again. I know, he, you know, you won't say it because he's that guy, but I know that he knows there's a lot of people looking at him. Oh, yeah. And if he gets an opportunity, he's going to show me right back down their throats. Yeah, you know? I was, I was going to say... That, that's what I feel is I think a lot of people are looking at this. You know, your, your wording was, I think, perfect on, on Matthew is maturity. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what he does, you know, within this team environment where he doesn't necessarily have to carry things. But what I really love is he, he is very unpredictable. And that's what I like about him. And like you said, if you're in those situations sometimes, and that can happen in European games where it's a little bit of a dry out, you know, Matthew could be that, that, that energy guy and give some of those European bigs um, a little bit of a tough time. You know, they, they, they may not have seen um, somebody of his length and skill um, who can, you know, kind of get that reverse pivot going on the 15 feet and take him off the dribble if he needs. He's got nice soft touch around the rim. I'm kind of excited. And, and I like the fact that you're alluding that he knows that people are looking because that tells me he's motivated and yes. I have personally coached against a very motivated Matthew and it's not very nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, we, we lost the trophy final to those guys and, and you go and look at that trophy final, look at some of the stuff that Matthew did. It was sensational. And you know, he was motivated when, we, you know, you, I mean, that was a unique season with all the British players on the floor mm -hmm. and you could tell, you could feel it in the air. You know, there was a free song about how everybody felt and that was a motivated Matthew and the rest of the guys that you saw going and, and that's the guy we're looking for, and that's the guy we hope shows up, you know, when the chips come down and, and we're going to need something. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. Exciting, it's exciting times. <laughs> just, just know, Coach, we will be watching.
<laughs> oh, Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I, I, we'll be watching. The, the limelight is on. And I think oh, just yeah. to finish with, you know, a, a, a last question just to allude with is the, the BBL season. You, you've kind of spoke about it a little bit. I think the expectation is you feel in order to kick on, no matter what happens in this European competition, you've got to win out. Um, you know, who are you looking at so far? The rosters aren't 100% set. Um, we've got uh, prediction week coming up for episode two. Um, so I'm, I'm going to pick your brain, do a little bit of research. I'm going to get my pen out right now. But who are you seeing? Yeah, you too. Uh, who are you seeing um, as those potential um, uh, champions or chasing champions? Well, I mean, first of all, you know, I know a lot of people have said, oh, yeah, you know, give London the title, whatever. Well, I've just said to you that we all put the kit on the same way, right, when we go to play the Tunis. And it's exactly the same when we're going here to play Plymouth or, or Newcastle or Manchester or whomever it is. I think clearly, you know, like you said, the spotlight is on, so people are going to come after us. We're not confused about that. We understand that. We've always had that anyway as London, and we know that's going to happen. So we're ready for that. But you look around, and I see some tremendous stuff going on around the league. First of all, I think the change to to four Americans, you know, for the league has made a massive change. Love it, love I, it. I love the idea. I think it's brilliant because I thought we were creating these kind of positions or around Europeans that were kind of falsely elevated. You know, I think it's much better now because you just look at someone like what Creon is doing at, at Surrey. You know, you're, now you're going to deal with Hassan and Trayvon right around the world. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's going to be so exciting, you know, and, and, and then Lovell Cook. So, you know, that's a terrific group. You've got to be very, you know, you know, who wants to have that game on the 1st of January? It's sorry. Oh, <laughs> Nobody wants goodness. to have that game, you know. Um, then, of course, you know, the guys will have, you know, they'll be thinking, you know, why are people ignoring us down at Leicester, you know? Why are people ignoring us? They're going to be doing that. And, you know, Coach Mike Mastro has recruited a very, very good crew. Look at the guards they've got, all big mm. guards, all shooting guards. Very, very, very big. Their size overall impresses me, to be fair. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. You know, Mo Walker's been resting for a year. <laughs> getting ready for this season, right? He was a handful yeah. before. It's not what it's going to be like now. So I think there's a lot of stuff there. I thought Coach Matt Newby uh, did a terrific job last year. An absolute Excellent. terrific yeah. job. And and no one's looking at it. You know, and he's been thinking, okay, don't worry, I'm going to go about my business and I'll be ready. We already talked about Plymouth and what's going on there. You know, and of course, the guys at Newcastle as well. So, you know, Cheshire always have a way of finding some nice talent. You know, they brought some, some guys back who know what they're all about. They brought a lot of local guys in, in to be involved. So I think across the board, the level is up. Yes. Uh, Sheffield, last year, I thought overachieved for what they had. You know, they've got a lot more now. They've got mm -hmm. a lot more weapons now. Um, so I think, I think it's going to be a very, very interesting uh, competition. Um, I, think, I think Newcastle, Leicester, Plymouth are going to be right up there. Um, before you throw in the vagaries of how far away the, you know Plymouth and Newcastle are, the travel and how the fixtures work out, so this is this season is we are not thinking in any way that this is a foregone conclusion. This is going to be a war. Every time we step out, whether it's anywhere, we expect a war. And you know, you know, you're talking to Byron Bar Mullins and you're talking about yeah, you know, Tenerife, Zaragoza, this that, and the other. I'm like, yo, I'm not worried about that. I want to see what you're like on a Friday on the road to Manchester. <laughs> yeah. That's what I want to see. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. and, and if you can come through that, then we know we're ready. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad you you mentioned that because um, just for our listeners out there and our, and fans who follow the league, it's different when you are the hunted and you guys are the hunted. There's a different level of pressure that you're playing with. And so on another aspect that people might not be aware of is that there's going to be many guys around the league that's going to be playing to put on to be a future London Lion. So uh, you're going to get everyone's best shot. But is it fair to say that anything less than a BBL title for the London Lions would be a disappointment? Well, I mean, I think that's a, that's a big one. I mean, I would, I would be disappointed if we're not champions. Um, but I say that because I would have said that last year. Um, you know, I felt the same thing last year. I, f I felt it took us a while. We had so much distractions going on in our club, and it took us a while to get ourselves in the groove. And I felt... Once we got past Christmas, we started rolling. You know, um, I hope it doesn't take us that long this time. Um, but but yeah, I mean, you know, we're trying to we're trying to win every game we play, uh, both in Europe and, and at home. We want to do that. We want to we want to create an aura about what we're doing. Um, obviously, you know, we want to we want 
you know, London is a funny kind of place. You know, I, I admire the crowds at Plymouth. I admire the crowds in places like Newcastle and Leicester where people are passionate. I love the team. I love what their team is all about. And they come into every single game. Yes. In London, it's not like that. It's like, I might come to a game in December. Maybe I catch a game in March. You know, it's like that. So, you, you know, it's like New York, right? It's like, yeah. fans in New York. are they playing yet? Yeah, they're approaching the fourth quarter. Okay, let's go see them. You know, yeah. so the fun thing in London is kind of different. So we have to find a way to capture that. Um, mm. I don't necessarily know the answer to that, um, but there's something we need to find in London. And I think winning is, is number one. Um, if you're not winning in New York, which they haven't ever been doing since 1970, mm. that's what you get. So you can't have a situation like that in London. You've got to have a situation yeah. in London where London wins. And if that happens, you might be able to turn the screw on the guys who live in that part of, part of town and, and the money that we need to do other things. That's what we're about. And that's what, you know, so we won't be taking it easy on anybody. Drew will be coming. <laughs> uh, I am excited. Um, yes. You know, we wish, we wish we had more time. I think we could have kept going. It would have been nice to, to jump in the memory vault. Um, but uh, it's my job to manage the time. So uh, we're going to wrap things up right here. Um, Coach, thanks so much for joining us today. We wish you all the luck in the world. Yes. You will be flying the flag for the British Basketball League um, in Europe. And we're most definitely excited for, um, you know, some of the commentary you give us there on how you're going to play. I know it's going to be um, Coach Vince McCauley's style. I know it's going to be London's London Lions style. And I'm just looking forward to seeing, like you said, you, you've added that length, you've added that height it's an exciting time. Get if you are in London, get to those games, man. Get to, Coach. Get to the copper box. Thank Fresh you very guess. much, guys. You know, yeah. we appreciate that. And we're gonna go out and do everything we can and, and, and really try and represent. We, are, we really yeah. are gonna try. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, thanks for so your much time, for time, Coach. And and we're definitely behind you. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks we'll see you soon. Okay, that's a wrap for episode one. We are always keen to hear from you, the fans. Reach out to us on all forms of BBL socials using the hashtag the BBL show. Um, great first guest. We were so excited to have Coach on. Um, let him have his moment. He was beaming with pride. Mm. He's earned it. It's been a long journey for him. And, uh, you know, as he has highlighted in that interview, he is far from done. He's got some huge expectations and uh, huge things to still accomplish. Um, so we'll be watching him next week in his uh, European endeavor. Mm -hmm. um, episode two, super, super excited for this. We are going with the preseason rankings. I do uh -oh. not want to be you right now, Drew. Uh -oh. um, are, you, are, are you ready to make some enemies is the question I have for you. Yeah, I mean, for me, my enemies are probably going to come on the, the form of the keyboard. Um, for you, every uh, coach in the BBL is going to mention you and your ranking system, especially when we have to do that kind of wooden spoon. Um, yeah, I, th I, I think you've got a little bit more of an interesting ride than myself. We've got a legend of a guest joining us. I will not ruin that. But until then... This is myself and Drew signing off. First episode. We'll speak BBL to you soon. BBL show. BBL show.